Right, I thought to myself this morning, I've been working on these again, and I thought, they're just going to be so fed up seeing them. And then I thought, well, I could, I can't tell you much about them because I don't want everything to not be a surprise for the girls that are coming to London. But obviously, everybody knows this is what they look like at this stage. Um, so there's this one, that one. They're all damp stretched, these bits. They need to be finished and have the insides done, which you haven't seen. I've got one that's completely finished that I'm not going to show you. And then I've got another one in progress here. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about how I approach this, really. Um, and when I put these on my blog last week, I think it was, I said one of them had something missing and I didn't realise until I'd taken the photographs. Well, what it was, I put it on my blog and there was only this bit done. I'd, I hadn't, didn't done, hadn't done that with the gimp. Um, so they, because they've all got gimp at the top and the one that I put on didn't have it. I thought it was finished and it wasn't in terms of the embellishment of the front. So I'm just going to carefully move these because I don't want to crease them because they're damp stretched now. And I've made them all. I had a massive, 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 really old tablecloth that's got a beautiful embroidered and embellished centre, but the outside was just plain um, with this kind of band with the eyelets on. So this is made from that tablecloth. I've preserved the centre of it and I sometimes use it for taking photographs of my work on. Um, but the outside, that's what I've made this from. So it's all vintage cloth, well, old cloth. And I'm not sure that it it won't crease easily after it's been damp stretched. So I've got to be careful with them. So I'll just move them over here. Put my ironing board behind me. I'll put them on my ironing board. Um, there. Right, so they're safe now. So if I get this one, I started this one last night and I've partially got the sequins on. So I'm literally just going to put a couple of sequins on here and explain to you what I'm thinking when I'm doing it or how I work that, that part of the process. And you've got to be careful when you've got... I tend not to put beads and sequins on something until the last minute because um, getting your hoop on can be tricky. So be careful when you're putting your hoop, okay? Um, so I'm using a, a Milner's needle or a straw needle, a needle that I'd use for bullion knots because I've got to get it through the eye of these sequins. Um, so let me get some sequins. So what I tend to do, I do it in the, where have I put, I have do, I have a bit of felt here. To put these see what I don't believe this. I had it here a second ago. I'll just give me a second. If you do my classes, you'll know this is normal. You'll be like, oh look, she's lost something again. It was here right in front of me a nano second ago. So let me make sure it hasn't got caught up in here. No, I don't honestly. Put it down on the floor I mean, but where is it? I really... It's a mystery, I swear. Right, well, so I can't use that, can I? But what I tend to do, what I was going to say was, um, I get my sequins out of here first to keep them in, like, little plastic tubs. So I'll just lay a couple at the side, because I'm only going to do a couple with you. But these sequins are incredible. Um, I think I ordered 10 packets when I knew I was going to use them on here. So and thousands of them have ended up on the floor. But if you look at these, they've got a big central hole, but they've also got little attaching holes at either edge. So I'm going through the little attaching holes at the edge when I do this. All right. So I'll just put that there. So like I said, <coughs> excuse me, a Milner's needle, straw needle, and I'm coming up through the, the eyelets, and I've got a sequin there, so then I do three just straight stitches between each sequin, so that's one, coming up through the eyelet, two, this is my spacing, so that they sit nicely, two,
three. Okay. And then the next thing is a sequin. Now I do try and space out the colours. Um, but I'm obviously not, well not obviously, but I'm not doing like pink, green, blue, silver, pink, green, blue, silver. I want it to be more random than that. But I would avoid putting two of the same colour together. Um, so, so now I'm going to put my sequin on. So I just, I've come up through the eyelet there. Put it through the outer hole. And then go down, not through the eyelet, just through the fabric. And it will make itself sit properly. There. Okay. So three spaces now with three stitches. One. And I'd obviously try and do them straight down. Um, so they're neat. Two. Oops, and three. So now it's ready. This is actually quite a quick process. I stopped myself from finishing this piece last night because I wanted to do this with you. But this is probably the quickest process of the whole thing. So I'll come up there, then we'll get a blue one through the outer hole, the hole at the edge of the sequin, and down. And it finds its own place there. So that's that. So I just wanted to, because I thought you've seen so much of these, maybe it would be nice to just show you a little bit of the process. And then when I've done that, let's put that sequin away. And then when I've done that, I'll put the gimp across the top. Um, there. Like that and secure it with bullion knots. I do measure it and mark it before I put it down because otherwise it'd be going all over the place. It wouldn't be straight. I can't do that straight, that perfect straight line without any kind of measuring and marking. So, and then that's the fronts of them finished. So, um, don't want to give too much away. I can't show you my finished one, but inside they have pockets, aligning and stitching and pockets and things inside and they have ties to hold them together and things. So like I say, when I come back from London, oh, but I, actually, when I come back from London, I'm taking loads of pictures while I'm doing this. So I'll have all those pictures to share when I come back. But when I've done the GIMP, that isn't it, is it? Because then I have to do this. Okay, these droplets of French knots across the front as well. This is probably the most time consuming bit. These are all white French knots and then pink, green, yellow, pink, green, yellow, pink, green, yellow um, dotted about in there. And the same colours as are on the GIMP. Okay, so that's what's happening with these and hopefully you can see by that why I'm spending so much time on them. Um, I'm definitely going to have enough time to finish them all. I'm so far ahead with them, I'm really happy with them because the most time consuming bit is getting this bit done. Putting the insides together isn't doesn't take that long really, um, so I'm really happy with the progress I'm making with them. But I do have to keep cracking on with them, so you're probably going to see it again. Um, or maybe <coughs> if I'm working on this and nothing else, I might try and find old photos for you that some of you haven't seen, because some of you won't have been coming here as long as others, and there will be other work that you haven't seen. So I might try and if I'm struggling one day because this is all I've done. I might try and put some old stuff together for you, um, so you're looking at something a bit different. Okay, 